Well, I think the, the biggest signal that we should be looking at is that both Tokyo and Washington in their joint statement said that China was a problem. And this is something that Tokyo has been very hesitant to do up to this, up to this period because of their economic relationship with, with Beijing. And this strongly suggests that um, t uh, Washington and Tokyo are on the same page of the book. They're very concerned about uh, China's external behavior, whether it's the East China Sea around the Senkaku Islands, the South China Sea in terms of artificial islands, as well as the ab uh, aggressive behavior against Taiwan. I think uh, 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 it was Kurt Campbell who mentioned this statement about um, defending Australians uh, and not normalizing relations with China until the economic coercion stops is very significant. And I think um, Tokyo, Seoul, and other victims of economic coercion are on the same page of the book, and they welcome these strong statements. Yes, I think that is very heartening for Australia. We've been sort of sitting, trying to juggle these big powers, looking for support externally. What can the U.S. do? What le levers do they have to to sort of deal with China in a way to stop this coercion, not just of Australia but of other countries? Well, I think the United States alone will, can definitely um, influence the economic coercion. But I, what I really think moving forward is is that um, the United States works with Japan and India and the EU and Australia really to to say that this is unacceptable. You know, um, I'm from Canada, and Canada also has had economic coercion against them. And our foreign minister has basically forged a, an alliance, a, a coalition of countries, to sign a document that says that uh, any countries that um, engage in hostage diplomacy, and I hope an extension on economic coercion, will be subject to joint sanctions. And I think that is definitely the way to move forward. The United States can also pressure China by prolonging the sanctions associated with the trade war or ex extending those sanctions until, I think, the economic coercion against Australia and other countries stops. China up until now, uh, Stephen, has sort of just become more bellicose with their statements. The rhetoric flies against countries that don't fall into line with what they want. What pause is this going to give them, do you think? Well, I think they'll think twice. I, I think they realise that um, there is a growing uh, coalition of, of countries that are willing to uh, work together to try and constrain uh, China's behavior. It's not an alliance. The Quad is not an alliance. We should be clear about that. Um, but I think there is a growing sense that uh, countries need to work together to you know, put those constraints on China so that its assertive behavior um, falls within certain uh, agreed upon, um, a, a, an agreed upon uh, kind of limits. And economic coercion against smaller countries like Australia, I think, is, is a limit that has been passed. Um, but we should be clear that it's not just Australia that's had uh, the, these problems, many other countries. And, um, you know, Australia has also been victim to the uh, hostage diplomacy, um, as well as Canada and others. So I think that the broader uh, bellicose, the broader sort of behavior by Be Beijing is a track record. And this year in particular, uh, because it's the 100th anniversary of the Communist Party, will make it a difficult year for compromise. And that's why I think it's even more critical that we work with like-minded countries to um, have a, a consolidated uh, voice uh, to put, push back against assertive uh, behaviour. Interesting. Very interesting developments. Stephen, as always, thanks so much. Thanks, Beth. Talk to you next time. Indeed.